Hey everyone, it's Chime Time, and this is Cooking Avenue, <laughs> and this is Carly. And grab your glass and let's cheers. Mm -hmm. And what are we drinking today? Kombucha. <laughs> and what kind of kombucha is it? Um, it's a strawberry mint lemonade that I try to make after the second fermentation. Yeah, and and like explain the first fermentation like real quick, I guess. I mean. So uh, the first fermentation, you take like black tea or green tea and sugar and you boil the black tea and then you put it into a large jar and then you add a thing called a SCOBY, which is this guy. So it's a bacteria that will grow on top of your kombucha will, that will add the carbonation to it. And then the second fermentation is where you take it out of the jar and then you put it into like a whole bunch of like bottle jars. Yeah, like let me... Let me put that down we have like we have um oops shoot we got uh some stuff that you've made over here and we've got some stuff you've made over here and they're individually labeled yeah i'm not wearing pants either um <laughs> we have um what's this one uh, cayenne pepper and pepper uh coconut and mint and then, and then we have strawberry man and then what do we got over here? Rose and hibiscus, which was, this one's my favorite. And then this is my super tonic. So it's a turmeric, ginger, honey, and I use ginger seasoning and turmeric season, seasoning, but it also has the roots down here too. Like I actually freshly chopped the roots. And it's so cool that like a little scopey guy is growing in, on top of it too. So like explain the the second fermentation and i guess like we'll just like hold, hold these in our hands on camera <laughs> so with this guy as i said they have ginger root turmeric that i chop finally chopped and then i have some really good organic seasonings that i put into it so you let this sit for about two to four days i think i waited six because the longer the fermentation the more like carbonation it gets to it so we waited about like six days for them, put them in the fridge, and now they're ready to drink. Which is really cool though, this guy actually developed its own SCOBY, so I have a second one from the original fermentation. Which is like, if we could see them, it's whatever is floating around, oh my gosh. I know, the top of it. Yeah, that thing at the top, I don't know if you could see. But uh, that's like some, like a little bit of bacteria that forms. I mean, like all fermentation is formed from bacteria, even the beer you drink, which is more similar to kombucha than not. Um, and sometimes you can get some residual bacteria in the second fermentation. Usually when you're fermenting it the first time, you just take the bacteria that you started with and scoop it out. It kind of floats at the top, but then sometimes if it's like a long brew, like some more bacteria will float at the top. It'll always be at the top, so it's kind of easy to just get. I get, like, I'm not sure about pouring it out, but um, if, if it would just, like, pour right out initially, but, like, it'll be at the top. Now, these are, like, kind of narrow, and these are reused bottles. Like, uh, I see that you're very green. I mean, like, it's it seems like your kombucha connoisseur as it is. <laughs> so, like, you know, whatever brand that is, uh, Suha. And... You're just reusing the glass, which is, is green. Uh, also, I guess there's something to the nature of how narrow the glass is. Like, it creates more carbonation, like the longer the neck and narrower the neck. <laughs> you should have seen when we opened this guy yesterday. <laughs> it like spout, like shot up and my whole entire ceiling was covered in it. Yeah, it, it seriously popped off. I mean, this is like attached, right? It's got like a, a metal attachment. And this thing just shot, like shot open, like a kind of like a champagne cork. And we didn't even notice it was on the ceiling until um, Carly went to go reach for something in the cabinet it was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah. This is, this at one time was uh, some kind of sangria or sangria mix. I have no idea. But um, you could reuse the bottles, especially if they have, um, this thing really keeps it sealed very well. Has a nice gasket. Uh, so again, we're gonna get into tasting. Uh, let, let's, let's describe some of these flavors. 
Um, let's do it again. And I could take to taste the mint and the strawberry. Can I you can, taste the mint now? I can taste the mint now, yeah. Okay, so initially, initially the strawberry was was overpowered. So what you? So you just started with the your your tea base, and then you just threw st strawberries and and mint, and that's yeah. it into this one. Yeah. So like, I used the kombucha sh kombucha shop kit, um, like he had, and they have a pamphlet. <laughs> Um, with like a whole bunch of ingredients for the second fermentation. So I kind of like looked that over. So like I cut about four to five strawberries, put them in, and then added mint to it and shook it up. What's cool yeah. about kombucha is like you don't really have to push second fermentation. You don't really have to add a sweetener to it. It's like so sweet on its own just from the natural. Yeah, the, the first fermentation recipe is very sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like sweet tea actually. Now you can leave the chunks in. You know, um, they're, see, they're kind of like flo floating around in there. It's just strawberry yeah, and, and leaves. And, um, some of the other ingredients like ginger are a little bit tougher. Like these are nice and soft, so you can just drink them. Um, oh wow. You have like so many in yours. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, so you don't, you don't even, oh, there's, there's, there's a really good shot. Ah. <laughs> so you could take it out, uh, and it won't really affect the flavor much. If you leave it in, it just adds like more, it's like pulp. It's like having pulp and orange juice. Mm -hmm. See, look, that's a little tough. That's a leaf. It's still eating it anyway. It's actually good. It adds to it. The, the the mint really makes it mojito like, I guess like strawberry mojito is is uh, how I would market it. So what is in this one? Uh, this is cucumber and mint. Cucumber and mint. Cuke. So we're gonna just pour a little bit. Do you recommend shaking it? <laughs> it's gonna make it fizzy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, don't shake it. <laughs> don't shake it. Yeah, let's let that sit for a little while. We're going to go over to um, cayenne cleanse. Yep. So what is a cleanse? <laughs> what is... Like, does, it, does it clean you out? Mm -hmm. Like your digestive system is what I was reading up on. Oh my gosh. So we're only going to drink a little of that. Yeah. Oh, did we shake this one up too? I did not. I think this is just the first time we're opening them, so they're just like extra bubbly. Let's try uh, this guy again. Yeah. It's good. It's nice and safe. Let me show you guys some bubbles. It's bubbling at the top. Oops, again with the. I keep showing us crop shots. Yikes, you know, like. It's fine. These are just shorts. Um. Yeah, everyone wear your shorts underneath your shorts. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're going to pour a little bit in. <laughs> okay. It's a, actually kind of a healthy amount just because if we just pour too little in, it's not even going to show up on camera. Again, I'm always spilling a little bit on, on the tables. Can't film that because it's... Pantsless. I don't know why I forgot. Mmm. It smells really good. You can definitely smell the mint, and I like how you can smell like the light cucumber in the back of it. Yeah, it's not too spicy. Mm -hmm. you know, not as spicy as I would have imagined. Maybe you have to sit, make, make it sit for a while or just put more pepper here. Yeah. This is the cucumber mint love. Oh, this is cucumber mint. Oh, I was like, <laughs> oh, we keep going back and forth. Okay, cucumber mint. That, I mean, that's why it looks like there's pickles in here. And you kind of do get that like slightly vinegary like flavor. Maybe it's just more of the cucumber like mm -hmm. flavor. Cucumbers just react really well to vinegar. That's why we have that as a pickled vegetable a little bit more than others. Mm. 
It's yeah. it's kind of pickly. It's like mild on the, the cucumber side and mild on the pickle side. Not like, I wouldn't call it um, pickle bucha. <laughs> but it's close. I'm not sure if um, I've had cucumber in most kombuchas. That's probably because like it, it is a bit vinegary and people people aspire for the vinegar flavor. Well, I mean, usually for second fermentations, like people usually filter it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I guess like you taste it more when you're actually tasting it the hard ingredients. Oh, I think I have those ginger in here too. <laughs> okay. You don't want to fuck up the flavor. Mm. I eat the junk. So, that one's pretty good. I th Yeah, I'd say like in the future, we'll take the cucumber mint and actually um, take the top off, fil filter it off. Neither the big cleaner. I, well, if, if I was to do this personally, I don't. I don't know about how you feel about it. Um, that's up to you. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a little bit of a slight palate cleanse with some sweet. <laughs> so now we're gonna go to the cleanser. This is the actual cayenne cleanser. This is spicy. I'm really excited, or I'm hoping it's spicy anyway. And I think like the cayenne is just the acidity. Open up on the camera. Oh, whoops. Yeah. I think the acidity is what helps clean you out. But I mean, just, this is what, cayenne and ginger? Cayenne, ginger, um, yeah. And... I think there's probably a little bit of pepper in there, too. The sporiness kind of like... The sporiness. Uh, the spiciness helps open up your pores inside and out. Like, uh, you know, even when you just smell this... Well, it's bubbling, and I, when I when I went to smell it, it went in my nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> told you. Waft. Yeah, so like, there's so many bubbles; it's just carrying all the debris like all to the top. So like, when we pour it, it's probably just gonna spill right out. Oh. This one is a little bit more spilly. I'll go grab a towel. Oh, you got a lot, a large chunk. Okay. While you do that, I'm gonna hold this up to the camera. So these are all the gingers, the gingers. Gingers. <laughs> gingers. And, um, yeah, like I said, you got, and then this is how it looks like when, it, when it's kind of clean. Cup. Okay. Mop that off and then mop the uh, bottom of these. Oh, look, there's, um, there we go. And then let's cheers it. I love this. Now, I think like the more cleanse you drink, the more likely you are to get cleansed. So maybe do a small amount so you don't like um, interrupt your workday. But if it's the weekend and... It kind of reminds me of fire cider. Fire cider. Mm -hmm. I love this one. This one's more my style. It's got the pizzazz. The pizzazz. I'm not too sure if I want to eat the ginger though in there. I kind of do. Oh, it's a little tough. Yeah, that's why I don't really want to eat it. Because it's just like a fresh it's root tough. that gets put in. It doesn't get boiled or anything. Oh, so you're saying, like, boiled ginger is, like, softer to eat? I think so. At least, like, when I have tea from raw stocks. <laughs> I was excited. It's actually really spicy, which is delightful. And ginger candy is really good. Maybe you could use this further? Or it's just been, like, sitting there so long? You know? I don't know. You might be able to. You could try it out. 
dry it out and put it in soap. That's that's my instinct. You know, we, we keep making ha homemade stuff all the time. Back to the mint. I guess uh, you have you said you you grab some water to rinse that out or or no? It's still in there. Just scoop it out. Yep. All right. But always back to the uh, strawberry mojito. That is so good. I'm gonna have to kick back the whole rest. Very little. I want to get all the junk chunks in. Let's seal this boy back up. Again, that was uh, cayenne ginger cleanse. And then ginger was really spicy. Like, yeah, the, I think the ginger was more spicy than the pepper. The cayenne. Then we have roast hibiscus. So I just use... There we go again. <laughs> None on the ceiling. <laughs> so I just had hibiscus petals and rose petals that I just added to it. It's a very, very sweet one. Oh, I'm excited. You're better at pouring than I am. And you did a good amount. I'm always overdoing it. Carly did perfect. So, um, the hibiscus is like a flower, mm -hmm. and I guess that's what those, uh, petals are. And it has a lot of, like, immune-boosting abilities, too. And, as we know, times call for a lot of immune-boosting. I mean, actually, that's, it's probably over by now, but whatever. <laughs> we are gonna keep boosting. Keep boost, staying boost. boosted. Cheers. It's like, like, it's like a tea, like a, a mild pomegranate kind of flavor. And the petals, oh, they, they really opened up over here. They're a little bit lighter. I was looking at the dark ones before. I like when you uh, take a sip, like you get the first like smell of rose hit your nose. Yeah. Mm. And the petals go down really easy. <laughs> You're making a phase. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> well, you said petals go down really easily, and then they got stuck on my lip. So. Yeah, so sometimes it'll get, like, between your lip and your teeth, and it'll be, like, you know, packed in there. You just scoop it out. <laughs> and, uh, or just wash it down with some more. Like, it actually goes down really smooth. This one is one where you could just leave it in there and not bother. And I think you don't want to miss out on the health benefits of of the flour either because how often do you eat flour i don't think people put it in their salads too often like flour petals yeah so it like i'm a huge advocate of eating as many different kinds of food as you can to be well versed so like this is an excellent way to feature flour into your diet more even more so than just like tea like steep tea because you're actually consuming it I'll have to like fry you up some dandelions, maybe. Dandelions, good. Mm -hmm. I think it has um, like I'm gonna pour some more of this. I think it has some um anti-inflammatory properties, but I could be wrong. But you could tell I really like this one because I'm drinking more and more. Mm -hmm. The other one, the cleanse, I really liked, but this is super sippable for probably everybody. This is like probably the most neutral that we've tasted so far because like even even the strawberry which is my other favorite it's quite sweet this is like right in between sweet enough for people who like sweet um and the hibiscus kind of gives a little bit tart to it too yeah and then second fermentation tartness as well so this is the most sippable or drinkable or gul gulpable super good this one's a winner holy crap I want to get it all in, in a swig. Alrighty, so now we're to the tonic. Yeah, but that one has a scoby in it, right? So we can hold off on it. Or you just want to talk about it? I mean, I already talked about it. I don't know if you wanted to try it. I mean, like trying. It's not dangerous to like try while the scoby's in there. Yeah, we'll try to just. 
pour the fluid and around the scubby. And if you pour, if you if you pour out, then cool. Like I can put them away. Yeah, and, and we have um, we have multiple cups. I just want to. I mean, does the scubby have to be in a disinfected jar or, or what? Sterile. No, I don't believe so because you can't. It's. I mean, it's made of bacteria. So what am I saying? <laughs> you don't want to disinfect bacteria. Yeah, but like when we made kombucha at your place, we just took the scoby out and then tried. Yeah, just dumped it in. Oh, cool. So the scoby can just float in there and keep fermenting while you sit. And then this is the Thai... <laughs> turmeric, ginger, lemon, honey. Oh, most ingredients. Turmeric is great. That's a yellow kind of powder. Um, ginger is kind of what we had, a little bit spicy. Honey will sweeten it up. And then lemon will kind of bind everything together. Lemon actually um, has some crazy properties. Like you pour it on fish, it cooks fish naturally. And also like it just ex it helps extract nutrients from other fruits and vegetables. Good to combine lemon with like almost anything. Cheers. Mm. This is also really sippable. I mean, you said you wanted it to have like a, a, a more like, like overpowering flavorfulness. Is that what you're going for? Or? No, not really. I just like wanted all the good stuff together. And I think the lemon and the honey actually like tone it down because I added a lot of turmeric and pepper because you need pepper to activate turmeric. Black, black pepper? Yeah. Yeah. Black pepper is really good for enhancing the flavor of turmeric. Right? Is that correct? Well, no, it actually like also brings out like a lot of the health properties with it. Like there's a, there's something that activates like black pepper activates something in charcoal to where like it, it's like boosted. Yeah. So like, it's interesting. What I'm kind of learning is that like vegetables are good for you, but they're even better for you when you mix them together. <laughs> and that's exciting. I think like something about citrus and acidity and, and pepper just kind of enhances it. Maybe it helps digest, but also like kind of digest the food, extract the nutrients for when you're eating it fresh, like when it's still hot or, or in, in the pot. Mm. This stuff is just magic. Let's see if we can get some more close up. I mean, that's what it says right there. And here's the stuff floating around in the bottom. What are we looking at at the bottom? Uh, turmeric root, ginger root, probably some of this. Oh, so it's not the turmeric powder, it's the turmeric root? Well, mostly turmeric root. I added like two tablespoons of powder in it. That's really awesome. Hmm. Okay, well, I think that uh, we've definitely had lots of fun. You wanna hold up, um, <laughs> you do the heavy lifting. <laughs> We've had lots of fun with with uh, Carly's different kombuchas. Uh, what, what is it? Second fermentation brews. Mm -hmm. And that's a wrap. <laughs> All right. Live to love. Chime time. And thank you, Carly. Bye.